first, why did I want to apply to Tisch in the first place? The first thing ever that brought me to the Tisch dance program was that I did a PowerPoint in the 8th grade in college readiness class. I read a bunch of stuff about Tish and then I made a PowerPoint about it. And ever since then, I was kind of just stuck on the fact that I really wanted to come here. So since I knew since like the 8th grade-ish that I wanted to come here, I tried to look up to see if there was opportunities to either come and tour the place or to be a part of some kind of summer intensive since I was doing that at other places and I was like, you know what, I should try to hit up Tish because I want to try and make connections with the professors and everything. So really, coming to the summer intensive here was a mini four week experience of what it really is like to be here as a BFA student. I'm sweating thinking about it. Um, but so before we get into my audition story, I'm just going to give a disclaimer, so just keep watching for the audition story, but... Before you consider auditioning for the Tish dance, program. You should know that the dance program is concentrated strictly, strictly, very strictly on concert dance. I'm sure you know what that is if you're watching this and you're at this point. You're not going to get any commercial experience here. just a fact to do that you have to go to other studios in your off time so if you're not interested in that great but if you are just know that you have to concentrate on those styles outside of school so it's a little hard to balance because I'm one of those people and I honestly did not know that they weren't gonna offer any kinds of you know commercial style classes because my parents came to a meeting. I think it was one of those introductory meetings after I had gotten accepted. And somebody said that every seven weeks we have this thing called special Fridays and we have guest people come on the last Friday of a rotation and give master classes. And somebody told my parents that those classes would be jazz and hip hop and tap. I mean, I don't tap, but like, Tap. But they told my parents that we would get that kind of experience, you know, every once in a while. It's fake. It's not real. It's only concert dance. It's a great school for concert dance. It's really good if you want to go in that pathway. Or if you want to also find other concentrations like science in dance or technology in dance, which is something that I've been trying out. Or going for choreography, which is also something that interests me and also why I've stayed. Okay, so now to the actual college application, to the actual part of applying. So everything is done on the Common App and I did early decision too. For every application done through the Common App, there's one Common App essay question. I mean, there's a bunch to choose from, but there's one essay. And I basically wrote about how things changed in high school and how I cope with change and how it's a part of maturing and stuff. So kind of a coming of age film, but in an essay. Some more academic -y details about me. I was in the top 3% of my, my high school class. And so I did pretty well with my grades. I knew from the beginning that in order to get accepted into the dance program, I had to also get accepted into the university. So my grades were going to count either way. Whereas there's other programs that concentrate more on your artistic materials and not on your grades. But I knew that I was gonna have to take academic classes here in order to fulfill all my requirements. I knew that beforehand. So, so all throughout high school, I really concentrated on getting the best grades possible because I knew it was gonna matter a lot. And then you need an academic resume which has all of that kind of information, like your ranking and then your SAT score. But the year that I applied to Tish, it was the first year ever that Tish was not going to require you to turn in your SAT score. So I think it stayed that way because it's worked out for many of us. But I would say not to turn in your SAT score unless you have a 1300 and above. That's just my advice. I had a 12 something, I don't really remember exactly what it was, which is pretty standard and average, but I didn't feel like it was something to show off. 
and I felt like my academic resume and creative resume and materials and everything could speak better for themselves without that specific number. There's also a 400 word statement that's specific to NYU's application. So because I had already done this summer program, which has so much to do with my application experience, I spoke a lot about how I really enjoyed that summer and a lot about what I learned in that summer experience being at NYU. And I included stuff about how the classes were gonna help me get to where I wanna be. I would say one main thing for that is to just sound yourself first and maybe enthusiastic and sure about your decision because that's what worked for me and I think that's what they're mostly looking for. Also using specificity, so I listed, I think two of the classes that I saw online that the program offers, I listed them in a way or embedded them into the essay and I talked about how those specific classes and the description of those classes sounded like it was something that was going to benefit me. Okay, so about early decision two, it is binding unless you can show that you didn't get enough scholarship and that you're not financially able to pay for the tuition but otherwise if they give you a half scholarship or a full scholarship or something like that then basically you're binded to the school which was something that I was okay with because I felt like it would show I was sure that I really wanted to come here that this was my first choice I wouldn't have done that if this was not my first choice and I think it helped a little because my audition was more towards the beginning so they got to see me and the group of people that had this school as a top choice first there was also a separate part of the application that was a part of the Tisch application where you had to turn in artistic materials and I turned in a headshot a dance shot of me jumping or something like that in the air and a creative resume with experience on your training and summer intensives on to the next thing so preparing for the audition okay so this is something that is just so extra and that i hadn't thought about before until i gathered all my audition requirement materials so every single school that i auditioned for asked for a different length time in the solo so some schools would be like 2 minutes and 30 seconds, 2 minutes, 1 minute and 45 seconds. So I had to then adjust the length of my solo and make different cuts of the music and things like that. It was, it was a lot. One thing I would recommend is that you make your original solo the length to your first choice school requirement. So I think that NYU's was two minutes and 15 seconds, something like that. And so I made sure of that on the website and then created my solo originally to that link. And then I adjusted it for all the other schools that were not my first option. I believe I practiced my solo for about two months before the audition in December. I really think that was one of the times where I was the most fit ever because I would just do the solo back to back to back to back to back. Just to get my stamina ready, even though after performing it at the audition. I was still super sweaty and dizzy because I danced my little heart out. <laughs> anyway, and I was also taking technique classes regularly, weekly, and I tried taking more ballet classes because I knew that was where my weakness was. So the semester before auditioning, I tried to put a little bit more concentration on ballet. Just because I knew I needed it to get in, yeah. Okay, now to remember the sweatiness and the nervousness of the actual audition. First, I would say do not get there early if you don't want to be in the first group. That was something that I kind of guessed already, but it's for sure. As you get there, they give you your numbers. So, if I were you, I would stand on the corner of 6th Street or 7th Street wait for at least 10 people with buns in their hair to pass by you and then walk to the dance building and walk in and do your little sign-in thing. Obviously get there with time because you have to turn in your forms and everything and they have to give you your number, you have to stretch. But if you don't wanna be in the first group because you forget combinations, don't be the first one there. Okay, so first is the ballet round. I mean, I'm still not good at ballet. Um, I'm not a negative person. I am just being realistic. I just don't enjoy ballet so much and I've come to learn that more and more over time. 
But yeah, I didn't have the most experience like other people before the audition in ballet training. I mean, I did, but just not since I was two years old like everybody else. So I think that was the most nerve wracking part and kind of good that that goes first in a way because you get it out of the way. And once you're done with that, you can just continue. <laughs> so I'll tell you these facts about me just because they'll probably make you feel better. My leg never goes above 90 degrees and that's just a fact. I mean, now, now it's kind of at 90 degrees, but... Also, in the middle of bar, I completely forgot the frappe combination. <laughs> it makes me like nervous to this day, I just like feel myself getting sweaty. <laughs> but I just completely forgot and stood in first position for a little bit and kind of just did like, you know, those little arms. The number one tip, I would say, this is Tip number one, the thing that helped me in ballet, despite the fact that I know that I struggle a lot with it. So the one thing that I did that I think helped me stand out was I looked like if I was enjoying what I was doing. So I tried to just keep, you know, my upper body super present and lighthearted and I tried to keep, you know, my face from looking super stressed or like tense or, you know, when you kind of just like stop breathing when you don't know the combination you know i just tried to smile it off not too much where it's just like super annoying and cringy but i try to just constantly think to myself have fun don't get super hung up if you mess up because it probably will happen with all the nerves you just have to keep going so like the way i did i just stood in first position kind of just like Mm -hmm. and then caught up at the end. That's what you have to do. They're gonna see how you react to messing up. If you mess up the combination and you're like, <sighs> or like turn around like super mad and annoyed or something, or you start having like a little mini nervous breakdown, it's gonna tell them that maybe you're not ready or maybe that you're just super tense and you just take this a little bit too seriously. They want you to enjoy what you're doing and to not try to attempt to be like a perfect ballerina because that's not what this program is for or the perfect dancer because let me tell you everyone here is a human being and we all mess up including me i think i mess up extra during class i'm usually in the back kind of confused if we're all here and we mess up all the time i don't think they expect everyone at the audition to be extremely perfect and getting everything right and having your leg next to your face. That's not, that's not what it is. Sometimes it can feel that way and you can start to get into that mindset just because it's audition season and you're super nervous and you wanna be the best that you can be. But wherever you're at, I think you should just show exactly that to the professors watching. It's not necessarily how many times you mess up, how many times you forget the combination, but how you react to that if it happens and just continue to move on and try to just stay present and in the moment and think of it as a class. So for the contemporary round, it definitely went a lot better for me and that's where I feel like I redeemed myself a little bit more. And they did a lot of combinations that were coordination based. They wanted to see how you would deal with weird coordination combinations going across the floor and there was also a funny warm-up where we were just jumping in first and parallel kind of just going like this switching in and out in like a weird pattern and it was kind of meant for everybody to mess up and to just laugh it off and stop feeling so nervous because the class was with the dean of the dance department and so i think initially without knowing him everybody was really nervous and so that was meant to just have everybody relax. And in that moment, I tried to make eye contact. Make eye contact, very important. Kind of just happened because he was right in front of me. And so we were kind of laughing and messing up the combination together and looking at each other. So I think that was a good moment to be memorable. So try to get a little bit of that in if you can. And then came the cut. This is the only cut that they do at the audition. And it's really overwhelming because obviously if you get cut, you just used all this money to come and audition and stay for a few days or whatever it is. It's just, it's so hard because I was cut at other auditions. So, and I think a lot of people that don't actually have to go out and audition don't really understand that part of it. Yes, there was a cut. And I think that they cut almost half the group. I remember my number was 17 and 
They didn't say what the numbers that they were calling out were for or what was gonna happen to those people. They kind of just said, okay, we're gonna call out some numbers. And they just started calling out numbers, but they didn't say for what. And I think all of my friends shared the same experience. They didn't tell anyone what the numbers were for. One, four, five, seven, 16, 19, and I was like, <laughs> what does that mean though? They were like, if we called your number, please stand up. And so they went to a corner and I was like, okay, well, they're talking for a long time. They're obviously telling them to get their music ready. Is this it? I, everybody was just freaking out and staring at each other like, are we in or are we out? And then they kind of just let them go and they all started walking out or getting their things. And I was like, okay, we got past that, you know, it's not money wasted if I get declined later. So that was a scary moment and I was like, okay, let's move on from everything that happened in ballet and contemporary and let's just, I just started thinking about my solo. And so they let us go outside and tell all of our super nervous parents and get our music and drink water and just get ready. We all had to do our solos in front of each other. And so thank God in the group that I was in because they split us into two studios. I think I went like second or third. So it was great because I didn't have to watch too many people before going, but I would say if you have to watch people, just, I mean, you know what works for you, but if it were me, if I was going last, I would just try to pretend like I'm watching but really just stare at the wall because I want to just stay focused on what I'm going to do. But since I went earlier, I got to sit down and watch the rest of the people and just calm down because there was nothing else I could do in the moment. Now, my solo was very hip hop -y influenced and it had some Horton techniques. It was really like a fusion of a lot of things. And I think the people that stood out were people that kind of fused different styles into their contemporary solos. And now when I think of some of the moves that I did, I am like, that doesn't go at all with the program. <laughs> Let me show you. But then I followed that with, you know, some technique, like I did some stag turns, and then I did like a lateral T, and I did a double turn. <laughs> and then another thing that I want to mention is having a moment of eye contact with the professors during your solo. So I talked about this with my roommates, actually last night as I was like writing down some notes, and they had very similar moments in their solos where they had like a little going off section, and then they just like stared at the professors which is super weird because i mean we all got into the program and i had a super similar moment where i was kind of like and then i held my breath for a moment and then i like released it and then i like looked forward and i was like looking at the professors and it was like a super you know intimate like melty moment you know what i'm saying tip number two is to do something that makes you stand out and have a moment in your solo where you have eye contact with the professors. It may feel like a super bold move, but in reality, they're looking for more people to be in their program. They just want the best for you. They want everyone to do well because they want good dancers in the program. So they have the best intention, so don't be scared to make eye contact during your solo. I would also say that they're not really looking for competition-y slash commercially kinds of solos, but that did work for some people. So if that is your niche and you feel like that is what you need to show, then do it. But I think they're looking for more experimental, bold kind of solo. Okay, and then after that happened, they put a bunch of chairs in the room. So they had little sections and we had the interview, which was the last round of the whole audition. I just remember them asking pretty standard questions like why do you want to be in this program? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Stuff like that. So I would say tip number three is that the answer that they want is an honest one. So if you're thinking in your mind, this is the kind of standard answer that they would want from like a ballerina type girl and that's not you. You need to just give an honest answer and just be yourself. That's so basic, but if you give like a kind of weird answer, just don't get hung up on it. It's like the ballet and contemporary rounds. It's like every single round. Don't get hung up on something that you already did. Just continue and just be in the moment. Like something that happened to me is they asked, I think it was the last, the last question. And they asked, 
what is something about the city that is different from where I'm from and why do I want to move here? My answer started super good and I was like, I want to be in the city because art is appreciated here. Art is showcased on the walls, on billboards all around the city and that's something that isn't really done in my hometown in Texas and that I just love the overall vibe of everybody here that everybody's so driven and it can motivate me and then I guess in my mind I was just like that answer is not enough, that answer is not enough, it's too basic, it's too basic and so then I was like I also just um I love that I can walk around here and not feel judged and I can be the person that I want to be and I can dress however I want to dress I can walk down the street with a giant pink fluffy hat like why like <laughs> and nobody would judge me you know people would be cheering me on people would be supporting me and that's something that i love about the city like what like it was so random and that's how my interview ended she was like i love that okay um and she didn't even know how to reply after that so i i hope that was the last question that she wanted to ask me because such an awkward ending. Once again, don't get hung up on those specific moments and just continue. I don't know, I guess after the whole audition was over, I had to look at the whole audition holistically. Hold, holistically? Be proud of myself and just be like, okay, that was all I could do. I have to move on now. I'm gonna go eat chipotle. I'm gonna go get a crepe, a chocolate crepe somewhere. And there's nothing you can do after that point. You just have to wait until the acceptance date and you'll have lots of anxiety along the way. At least that's how it was for me. But all you can do is wait, so you kind of just have to let go. Yes, replay it 50 times right after, but you have to let go. You must at one point. So moving on, getting accepted in February. I got accepted at an earlier date than most people just because of early decision. <laughs> is due to a lot of relief from a lot of stress that I've had and pressure on myself since literally eighth grade since the beginning of this story when I made that college readiness PowerPoint about NYU and I dreamt about coming here it was just one of my biggest goals ever to come to NYU but mostly to live in New York City and so all of that emotion yes is about getting into the program but it's also about defying what people had told me in the past about being an artist and about how you shouldn't go so far away just to be an artist you know all of those kinds of comments that all artists get usually I cried so much obviously but yes anyway I have technique class in 20 minutes so I have to get ready and leave but I hope that my tips and story helped you a little bit and I hope that my 45 degree leg helps you feel better about yours. And I would love to make a video about the actual program itself and the schedule and the classes offered and the kinds of classes that I've taken outside of the dance department, what it's like creating pieces here, rehearsal, college life, all of that kind of stuff. I would love to make a separate video about that. So please comment any questions or topics that you would like for me to talk about in the next video. And I'm going to be posting a question box on my Instagram story. That's my Instagram handle. So anyway, I have to change really fast and go to technique. But thank you so much for watching this. If you've gotten to this point, please consider subscribing to my channel because it supports me and my channel so much. And it would be so appreciated. Okay. I have to go.